Um, I was, yeah, I was watching on. this. I, I was watching this TED talk from this uh, neuroscientist Anil Seth, and he made this one statement. Uh, it's like uh, we are constantly hallucinating all the time. It's just that when we agree upon our hallucinations, we call that reality. So in terms of so that that frankly made me sit up at night because there is a 50 percent chance now that all of this is just being imagined up in my head. Just last night I had a dream uh, and I woke up from the dream and it was a nightmare actually. And in the dream, I was actually thinking, is this a dream? And I was 100% convinced that it was not a dream. And I was living in it and I was like, okay, I'm gonna be here now. And a and couple of minutes later, I just woke up. And how can I say, so is the chance 50-50 that this is a hallucination and or there is an objective reality that we've actually talked about okay so so i mean these are philosophical conundrums that have been around for centuries of course um, or, or even millennia and there's 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 for me that there's there is actually a a, a simple answer um no matter how much i hallucinate and no matter how much I dream, um, that I'm pretty convinced won't change empirical facts such as the contents of my bank account. Um, and 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 the reality that I'm going to face next morning when I've woken up and had some coffee and, and, and got some focus. So um, much that these are interesting questions to explore uh it depends to a certain extent on the nature of your background and training i trained as a scientist so i'm pretty pragmatic about these things um it's but i would be the first to admit that those scientists that adopt, that adopt a, a realist position a realist philosoph philosophy what i tend to call a, a realist preconception so there is an objective real world out there that we probe through our experiments and our observations. Um, it's an assumption. Hmm. But for me, it's a very, very good assumption. It's yeah. like the assumption that the microphone that we were talking about earlier um, is tangible. It has the properties that you think it has. Uh, when you flick the switch, it will be on. And when you speak, it will amplify and record your your voice with with the appropriate recording equipment. So again, um, we have this preconception, this preconceived idea of objective reality, and where we can fall foul is by thinking that the images, the model that we create in our minds, um, has a, somehow a di and, and and we express in mathematical terms, perhaps as part of some theory when it has literally a direct one-to-one -one, uh, correspondence with the reality that underpins that theory. And this mm -hmm. is where I think the, the string theorists have, 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 have taken a step too far. So a lot of their, the, the concepts that they have, so uh, you, you, string theory is created in multiple dimensions, all of which are compactified in a very small mathematical manifold. Uh, and hidden away at, at sub 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 atomic level um and yet without those hidden dimensions then you know string theory kind of wouldn't work and we wouldn't have the correspondence with the particles that we experience and so on and so on. but you, you that that's all very fine but but that doesn't mean those hidden dimensions really exist so i can concoct any manner of theories um, I can hallucinate, uh, if you like, uh, uh, on paper. I can you know, hallucinate a universe, uh, but that doesn't mean to say that it corresponds with uh, what I'm going to experience when I make an objective assessment in the laboratory or with a telescope. So um, th th we have to be cautious, but generally speaking, you'll find scientists are pretty pragmatic folk uh, they have no issue. They don't even think uh, uh, that they are adopting a philosophical position. Many, in fact, 
find philosophy unattractive. They think it's a waste of time having a philosophical discussion without realizing that without a philosophical perspective, they wouldn't be able to do science. But that's, hey, that's people for you. So you adopt a philosophical perspective, a realist position for the most part. There are some scientists that are more aware of, of the philosophy and the basis for their assumptions. But most go about their day to day work just assuming what they're dealing with is real. And why wouldn't you? You know, when you poke a chemical reaction in this way, you get this result. You come back to the lab and you do it again and it gets this. It gives, it gives you the same answer. So why wouldn't you assume you're doing something real and tangible? Yeah, it's a it's a good way to play around with what we experience most of the time or what we are more familiar yeah. with. Sure. Right. Okay.